Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations at your service here to show you an antenna that I just thought up literally in between bouts of fitful sleep during last night. Literally, sometimes th some, of th some of your best ideas or coolest ideas come in your sleep. And I think this is a pretty cool idea. You know what a quad antenna is, how it works. Uh, generally two square elements, square loop antenna elements. One, a driven element, DE, and another, a reflector, R, spaced by a fraction of a wavelength from each other. The reflector is about 5% larger around in circumference than the driven element. And the driven element circumference in feet is equal to, let's see, C in feet is equal to approximately 1004 divided by the frequency in megahertz. That is the does that look like an FT uh, Fox Tango to you? I, it looks more like some weird... Fo well, anyway, I'm good at weird alien letters from civilizations in far-off parts of the galaxy, so that's one of those. But anyway, the circumference of this element uh, can be found using approximately this formula right here. Well, anyway... The maximum radiation in response occurs from the reflector towards the dri uh, driven element and out uh, on the way out, transmitting, and on for receive, of course, the opposite direction, coming in like that. So this antenna would be aimed towards the right. But notice that and, and a ballon coil uh, provides for the appropriate balanced, unbalanced conversion to the coaxial cable to the radio. It's not a perfect 50 ohm match, but it's pretty decent and will suffice for all intents and purposes. So if we have about 5% longer here, this is about 5% longer than the driven element. Suppose that we make these elements circular rather than square. We could put supporting structures similar to the spokes in a bicycle wheel, but not made of metal, of course, made of something like fiberglass or even uh, polyethylene. And then we could connect them with a polyethylene horizontal support like that and get two ba uh, things that look basically like circular bicycle wheels, uh, why would we want to use circles instead of squares? Well, the reason is that a circle is a geometric figure with very special properties, one very special property in particular. It maximizes the area within for a given circumference around the object more than any other more than a square, more than a triangle, more than any rectangle or any polygon whatsoever. The circle has the largest interior area to circumference uh, ratio or uh, well, the largest interior area for a given circumference of any geometric figure, thereby in a certain intuitive or maybe we could even say aesthetic sense, theoretical sense, offering the greatest amount of signal radiation efficiency possible for any shape of loop. Or it would, it would seem intuitively so. And if it seems intuitively so, uh, there is some reason to suspect that it might actually be true. Although, of course, you have to double check these things. How you double check this, I, I'm not positively certain. I guess you could ask a geometer. but he would know about as much uh, 
about antennas. He would know roughly as much about antennas as Stan Gibalisco does, and that obviously is very little, but maybe enough to get out a pretty good signal, say on 20 meters, 14 megahertz. I don't know how big that is, but it's a manageable size. Um, this 5% larger, connected by the supporting structures as shown, and then in the center of that uh, set of supporting structures, you would have your rotator and your mast going down like that. The cylindrical quad, and I call it a cylinder or cylindrical quad, because these circular elements form the ends of a cylinder, similar to the cubical quad, which has square elements or diamond-shaped elements, which form the ends of a cube, actually a prism, rectangular prism. You might call it a prismatic quad antenna if you want to be more technically precise, but I will call this a cylindrical quad antenna. It's my uh, what I thought up between nightmares, uh, and so you might wonder whether or not there could be any validity to it. Well, if an antenna is going to work or if it's not going to work, there's only one surefire way to find out, and that is to build it and see. My uh, a city commission would probably have a fit if I put a cylindrical quad antenna in this neighborhood. Uh, and besides that, the ice storms and snowstorms and blizzards would tear the thing apart. That, that's uh, one consideration for any quad-type antenna is that it doesn't have a very good wind tolerance. It has a high wind load in relation to its physical strength, and the lower the frequency, the worse that problem gets. But if you live in some gentle climate place, such as California, uh, much of California, you, you might try out an antenna like this uh, and uh, see you could call yourself W6CQA. You're going to apply, well, okay, I'm getting carried away. But that's the basic idea of this cylindrical quad antenna, courtesy of W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations who will now say 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which, in my native CW language, inevitably translates, regardless of the antenna type, into de-de-da-da-da. De -de -de